Hi, I'm Rachel, a data scientist here at Kaggle, and today I put together a video for you to learn a little bit more about Kaggle etiquette. Especially if you're new to the platform, you might be a little bit confused about what some of the expectations are about how you should behave. And if you know a little bit of Kaggle etiquette, you can make friends, contribute to the community, have a good time, and maybe get a few medals. Eh? All right, let's go. So you may be wondering why I bother with etiquette at all. So like all communities, whether that's a sports team or a family or a business or um, a classroom, Kaggle has certain norms and expectations for behavior. And if you don't follow those expectations, folks may be annoyed with you. Um, so knowing what those expectations are on the forums, in kernels, and in competitions uh, means that people are going to be more receptive to your content, more likely to answer your questions, and more likely to give you upvotes. So on the forums, a good general rule of thumb is to contribute in useful information and respect people's time. So part of that is making sure that you're asking your question in the right place. So if I have a question about a specific data set, I probably don't want to ask that in the product feedback forum. I want to ask that in the data sets forum. Or if there's uh, the data set exists on Kaggle, I can ask it on the comments for that specific data set. Similarly, if you have questions about a specific competition, ask them in the forum for that competition. That's why it's easier for people to find your question and answer it. Um, and you can also see what other people are saying about the same thing. If you're asking for technical help, which I encourage you to do, um, there's just a couple things you can do that make it more likely that someone is going to answer your question um, and also show that you uh, are respecting the time of the people whose help you're asking for. So the first thing you should do is search the forums and see if somebody else has had the same problem. Uh, best case scenario, you find the exact answer to your question. You don't even need to bother asking anybody. You can just use the answer. Um, if you can't do that, when you start writing your question, you want to make sure to have enough information that somebody else can re reproduce your problem. So you might hear people talking about reprexes, R-E-P-E-X, so reproducible example. That's what they mean. And on Kaggle, the easiest way to do this, uh, if you're asking a question about a kernel, is make your kernel public and then share a link so that other people can take a look. Um, also, respecting people's time, show that you've already tried something, that this isn't just the first thing that you're doing is going to the forums and asking questions. You've worked on it on your own, you're really stuck, um, and you can tell them what you tried that didn't work, uh, and that'll help them narrow down uh, the, the answers that they might have. Also, be very specific when you're asking your question. So the more specific your question is, the easier it is going to be for somebody to help you. So if you're asking, hey, I want to know more about machine learning, that's a very broad question. It's going to be very hard to answer. But if you're saying, hey, I'm looking for good papers that talk about, I don't know, reinforcement learning for robotics underwater, uh, that's a much more specific question and people will be more, uh, it'll be easier for people to answer it for you. Um, and also, if you're polite, it's just going to make it more likely that people will want to help out. So again, nothing wrong with asking for help. I encourage you to do it. Uh, but showing that you're respecting other people's time makes it much more likely that they're going to help you. So here's a good example. This is a question from the Kaggle forums. Um, this person had a problem with uh, converting some values to date times. Uh, and you can see in their question, they say what they tried and what happened. So this is a little uh, reproducible code snippet. Um, the only way I think you could improve this was if there was if this was happening in a kernel uh, to share a link to the public kernel. Uh, and they was also very polite. So they had a little greeting. Hi, everyone. Uh, and they said, appreciate any advice. And this question did get answered pretty quickly. Um, so this strategy worked really well for them. Some other general guidelines about posting to the forums, avoid things that are a little bit spammy. So um, anything where you're advertising a product or, or really self-promoting. So if someone is asking a question and you have an answer and it's in a kernel you've written, it's great to link the kernel there. That's very helpful. Um, but if you're just like, here's a link to eight of my kernels, upvote me. I want to be a, you know, a Kaggle master someday. Um, that's a little bit less helpful for people, especially if they're not on sort of a set of coherent topics or they're kernels that are on very common topics. So I'd, I'd probably avoid that. Uh, if a message is really helpful for you, give it an upvote uh, to you know, thank the person who wrote the, the uh, message and also to help encourage them to write more like it. 
Uh, avoid adding people. Um, so a situation where it might be okay to add somebody would be um, if you were talking about something in a thread a while ago, and then in a different thread, there's something that's relevant, you might be like, hey, I don't know, at inversion, uh, this is what we were talking about earlier. Can you help this person? Um, a place where it would be inappropriate to at somebody is like, check out my kernel, at so-and-so, at so-and-so, at so-and-so, at so-and-so, at so-and-so. That's a little bit rude, and you might get downvoted if you do it that. Also, try to avoid creating a lot of posts on the same topic and instead consolidate everything into one post. Um, so a good example of this is um, when competitions start, there's often a bunch of people who are looking for teammates. Um, so it's a little bit more polite to uh, do all of that in a single thread instead of everybody creating their own thread being like, hey, I'm looking for teammates and I'm looking for teammates. In general, just be considerate. Um, don't be rude to people, especially people who are newer to the platform or newer to machine learning. It's a really rapidly growing field. Um, just you know, think about how you would want to be treated in this situation and uh, take that into consideration. And just remember, everybody's here to learn and grow. Um, and that includes brand new people, and that includes people who've been here for a really long time who want to learn more, because there's always more to learn. All right, kernels. So sort of similar to forum posts, you want to make sure you contribute useful information, but you also want to give credit where it's due. So in general, uh, if you find a kernel helpful, give it an upvote that uh, it's a little thank you to the author and it also encourages them to write more helpful kernels. If you have a suggestion or a question, um, leave it in the comments for that kernel so that they're at the bottom of the kernel. Um, and it can be really motivating for people to get comments like, hey, this was really helpful for me. I was struggling with X and this really helped me with it. Um, so there's a source of comments that's just really nice to receive. Um, then you might make a new friend. If you want to expand on a kernel that already exists, so somebody's tried something and you're like, oh, I want to try that same thing, but just sort of change some hyperparameters, for example, make a copy of that kernel. So this is also known as a fork. Um, and you can do that using the copy and edit button. And that creates a copy of their work for you to you know, play around with on your own. And if you end up making some big additions, um, then you could make the kernel public and be like, hey, um, I've made some additions and changes to this kernel, and this is what happened. And you can have a little back and forth with the original author. Uh, if you use just a little bit of somebody else's code, so maybe just a function that they wrote, it's considered polite to um, write above whatever code you're using, leave a little comment and say, hey, this function was written by at inversion, for example, go check out the kernel where he wrote that, uh, and then a pointer towards the original kernel. So again, just considered polite. Um, and just in general, try to avoid creating a lot of very similar public kernels. Um, so whatever you do in your private kernels, like that's your business. Um, but if there's, you know, 18 kernels that are created in quick succession on the exact same topic, that can be, uh, make it a little bit harder to find relevant things. Um, so sometimes it can be a little bit nicer to find a kernel that already does more or less what you want and then fork it and edit it for your own needs. All right, competitions. Again, some general guidelines. First of all, be considerate, um, follow the rules. That's less of a suggestion and more of a dictate, but also good etiquette. Um, and think about how you can help everybody improve. So during the competition, if you're on a team, make sure you put in your best effort. Um, your teammates chose you over other potential teammates, so you wanna make sure that you're doing your part. Um, sharing useful kernels is a really great way to get feedback and other ideas for the community. So some types of kernels that are super helpful are um, really uh, detailed um, exploratory data analysis kernels, pre-processing pipelines with some helpful functions for people. Um, so those are things that can be really uh, helpful and you know get a lot of upvotes and maybe some medals on the competition. Um, if there are kernels or form posts that you find useful, give them an upvote that um, again, says thank you to the author and encourages them to produce other useful content. Uh, and of course, read and follow the rules for the specific competition. Uh, and this is a less of an etiquette thing and more of a hard requirement, but also good etiquette. As the competition starts to get near closing, um, I would avoid sharing a high scoring kernel. So you're really high up on the leaderboard, you're doing really good work, you really wanna share it with people. I would wait until after the close of the competition. So I'd say probably not within a week of the close of the competition. And the reason is if you have a really good kernel that people could learn a lot from, if it's really near the close of the competition, they're not gonna get the time to sit down, understand what you're doing, um, maybe incorporate some of that into their own work. 
And also a lot of people will probably fork that kernel and end up having a high score on the leaderboard um, and having a higher score than people who have been working on the competition for quite a while. And that just, that just feels a little bit discouraging. So that's considered a little bit rude. Uh, and of course, as the deadline comes, everyone's getting super stressed. You're training your last minute models. You're like, oh, do I have my submission all formatted correctly? Um, so just make sure that you avoid taking out that stress on other people. And then finally, after the competition, uh, congratulate the winners. You all worked very hard and uh, it's really exciting to win a Kaggle competition and it's really nice to get the support of your peers. Um, and if you did score well, it's a considered very polite and cool to share your approach so others can learn from it. A lot of people will do that in uh, a forum post, actually. Here's what we tried. And they might even talk about some of the things that they tried that didn't work first. So that can be a really nice opportunity for everybody in the community to learn. Um, and of course, if there are uh, approaches that have been made available, you go poke through them, see what they did, you know, add some things to your own little bag of tricks. Uh, and then finally, move on to the next competition. So these have been uh, some etiquette guidelines, and we also do have community guidelines for Kaggle. Um, and there are four of these, so be patient, be friendly, discuss ideas, don't make it personal, so no attacking individual people, um, threats of any kind are unacceptable, uh, and also uh, any level of harassment is unacceptable. Um, and you can, of course, report it to support at Kaggle.com, but we also have a, a report feature for individual forum posts um, that you can make use of if it's uh, violating some of our guidelines. And you can form, find more information on the community guidelines on the forums. All right, so now that you have some more information on what's considered good etiquette on Kaggle, I hope you've got all the tools you need to have a really great time on the site and make some friends and learn something new about data science. And I'll see you on Kaggle. Bye.